All right, I'm going to take a look at 39 through 52. And uh, in 39, we're told to find the discriminant. The discriminant is really taken from the quadratic formula. It's this piece that's underneath the square root. And what this piece tells us is if it's positive, there's going to be two answers or two solutions. If it's negative, I'm sorry, if it's zero, there's going to be one solution. And if it's negative, there's going to be no solution. So that's the discriminant. So uh, we have like negative b plus or minus the square root of b, b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Um, and this then is the piece, b squared minus 4ac, uh, that tells us how many solutions uh, or how many times our parabola is going to cross the x-axis. So two solutions would look like this, one solution would look like this, and no real solutions would look like this. And so uh, we use the discriminant to help us tell what's going to happen. Um, so let's take a look here. I have labeled my a, b, and c. a is negative 1, b is 7, c is negative 10, and I'm just going to plug those in. So I have uh, b squared minus 4 times a times c. And so b is going to be 7 times a, which is negative 1, and c, which is negative 10. And I'm going to work this out. So 7 squared is 49. And then if I multiply all these together, I'm going to get negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4, times negative 10, which is negative 40. And when I put these together, I get 9. 40 minus, 49 minus 40 is 9. And so 9 is positive. So this is telling us there will be two real solutions. We don't have to figure out what they are. We just have to, we use the discriminant to just tell uh, what we will have, OK? So again, we're going to say uh, b squared minus 4 times a times c. And we just plug in our b is negative 10, our a is 5, and our c is 5. And then we're going to work this out. So that's going to give us 100. And negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Times 5 is going to give us negative 100. And 100 minus 100 is 0. So when we get 0, that means there is one real solution. There's only one x value. One y is 0. All right, for number uh, 41, draw a dot plot for each data set and then identify the mode. So here I have a data set. And it looks like my smallest value is 7 and my largest value is 11. So I'm going to create a scale here. I'm going to have, I'll just start at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Tried to keep them pretty even, but obviously not too great. OK? And I'm going to label this shoe size. And then a dot plot. I'm going to go through. So 8 is going to get a dot here. So let me fix this. 7, I'm going to put a dot. 8, put a dot. 8, put a dot. 11, put a dot. 8, put a dot. 10, 10, 8, 9, 9. Okay, there's my dot plot. And then I'm identifying the mode. The mode is the number that occurs the most often. So my mode is 9. I'm sorry, my mode is 8. Silly. My mode is 8. I have the most amount of 8s. So same thing here. I would look at my largest and smallest number. It looks like my smallest is 4. And my largest is 15. I'm not going to count by 1s. I'm going to count by 2s. So I'm going to say 2. Actually, let me create. Let me do this first. And we're going to have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Okay, and then I'm just going to put, oh, uh, this is hits in hacky sack. So 
So I'm going to say, okay, 5 is going to be in between 4, 10, 12, 15, 7, 5, 4, 13, 5, 8. Okay. And so for this one, my mode, I have a three-way tie. I have 4, 5, and 7. I have a three-way tie. Oh, wait. That doesn't make sense. What did I do? I put, I put my 7 in the wrong thing, I think. Because I should have 1, 2, 3 fives, and I only put 2. Because I think I put a 5 over here by accident. Just talking and thinking and all those things. So if that's the case, then my mode is 5. Okay, first quartile, third quartile, min max. I'm just going to do 43. You can do 44 on your own. Um, so the first thing we've got to do is put these numbers in order. So I'm going to say 14, 15, 15, 16, 17. No 18s, a 19. 22, 22, 23. There we go. And those are all my numbers listed. I might want to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I have the right quantity of numbers there. All righty. So here's what we've got going on. Now that I've listed them, I need to find my median. So if I have 9, if I'm going to split this data, I can have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I have 4 on either side, then 17 is my median. When I only have one number as my median, I'm not going to include it when I look at my other numbers. So now I'm going to find the median out of this group. the median in this first group, I have 1, 2, 1, 2. So I have double numbers. So I would add them together and divide by 2, uh, which would give me 15. Same thing here. 1, 2, 1, 2. So double numbers is my median. I'm going to add them together. 22 plus 22 is 44. And then divide by 2 and get 22. If you're adding the same numbers, you get the same if you're adding the same numbers together and then dividing by 2, you're going to get the, the number you started with. So this is my Q1. This is my Q3. This is my max and my minimum. So here's what we're going to do. For a box and whisker plot, we create a consistent scale. So I'm going to create a scale that counts from 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. If I wanted to keep going, 24, right, so on. Uh, and then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my minimum and fit it to my scale. So 14. And my maximum is 23. And then I have my Q1, which is 15. And that's going to be connected to uh, my Q3, which is 22 and 17's in the middle, and then we make a box out of our middle ones, and then whiskers to the edges. So I have my min, my Q1, my median, my Q3, and my max. And we, we would want to label this age at first job. Uh, 45, uh, 
we read from left to right. So when I look from left to right, if my data is trending from left to right downward, this is going to be negative correlation. Uh, there is, there's nothing, there's nothing here. There's 46, there's nothing going on. So this is no correlation. Okay, this would be positive. And again, no correlation. All right, let's dive down here, 49. We've been given standard form. We're going to find the vertex, axis of symmetry, and y-intercept. So the vertex, we're going to have to plug in the axis of symmetry and solve. The axis of symmetry is a formula, negative b over 2a. And the y-intercept is when x is 0, y ends up being our c value. So I'm going to start with my axis of symmetry, my a, o, s. And I'm going to plug into the formula, negative b divided by 2a. Uh, b is a negative 6 and a is 1. So as I work this out, this is going to be 6 over 2, which then reduces to 3. So x equals 3. That's my axis of symmetry. For my vertex, I'm going to take my equation, but I'm going to replace x with my value from my axis of symmetry. So if I plug in a 3, then I'm going to solve this out. 3 squared is 9. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. And then plus 7 doesn't change. And I'm going to put all of these together. And that's going to give me a negative 2 when I combine them. So our vertex is a point. And our point is when we made x3, y was negative 2. When I made x3, I solved y is negative 2. That's my vertex. And then uh, y-intercept. If x is 0, y ends up being just our c term, which is 7. Because if I make this x0 and this x0, these are multiplying. And anytime you multiply with 0, it gives you 0. So these essentially cancel each other out and you're just left with this. That happens every time for the y-intercept. So 0, 7. This graph is going to concave up because it is positive out front. And then we're going to sketch this graph. So I have an axis of symmetry, x equals 3. So that's our mirror. I have a vertex, 3, negative 2, which would be down here. I have a y-intercept of 0, 7. Now, if you notice, our scale doesn't go high up enough to get us to 7. It would be somewhere up here. So, And then we would reflect across and have 7 over here. So because we don't have that, we're just going to loosely draw what it might look like. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So let's do that. Same thing on 50. Our negative b over 2a. Right, so that's actually negative uh, 12 over 2 times negative 2, which is going to give us another positive 3. So x equals 3 is our axis of symmetry. For our vertex, we plug that back in. So I plug in 3, and here's what I've got. 3 squared is 9, and 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. 12 times 3 is positive 36, and negative 20, just chilling. Okay, and then we would just put all of these together, and that's going to give us, uh, let's see, positive 18, and then... Uh, negative 20. So that's going to give us a negative 2 when we combine those. So y equals negative 2. So here's what we're saying. For our vertex, when we made x3 and solved, we got y equals negative 2. 
and then our y-intercept is 0 comma negative 20 again when x is 0 y ends up just being the last number this is going to concave down because it's negative so we're going to say down and now let's graph it so I've got my axis of symmetry x equals 3 so I'm going to find 3 and that's my mirror my vertex is the point on that mirror which is 3 negative 2 and again this goes down to negative 20 there would be a point down here and a point over here it would reflect uh, I don't have a big enough graph so I'm just going to loosely graph what it might look like okay this side's actually not accurate at all All right, 51, vertex form. Uh, this is just its, its own form. Uh, we can find our vertex from it. It's the opposite of what's inside with x, comma, the same as the outside. So our vertex is going to be negative 3, comma, 3. It's the opposite and the same. And then our axis of symmetry is easy to find because it's the same as the first point in our vertex. So x equals negative 3. This is going to concave down. Oh, let's do our y-intercept. Our y-intercept uh, is when we make x 0. So let's find out what happens if we make x 0. So I rewrote the equation, just I used a 0 instead of x. We're going to put these together first. Three squared makes nine. That negative still waiting outside for it. Now it's going to be a negative nine plus three, and that makes negative six. So when x was zero, y was negative six. That's our y-intercept. And we said this would concave down because of this negative. So let's graph it. My vertex is negative 3, comma 3. So negative 3, 3 is up here. Uh, my axis of symmetry cuts through that. And I can't use my y-intercept on this one because it's all the way down here. But it would reflect across 0, negative 6, and something like this. It's like eventually it would do that. All right, finally, number 52. Again, our vertex out of vertex form, easy to find. Opposite of what's on the inside, same as the outside. Our axis of symmetry is the same as that first number. And then our y-intercept, we want to know if I make x 0, what would happen? So 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And 4 plus 3 is 7. Actually, I don't want that boxed. So my vertex, I'm sorry, my, I already found my vertex. My y-intercept, when x is 0, y is 7. Let's start graphing some things. 2, 3 be here. Oh, we know this is going to concave up because it's positive out front. Uh, my axis of symmetry goes through there. Beautiful. And this one I can plot my 7. 0, 7's there, and then it reflects across. So I have another point over here, and that's my parabola.